thank you so much for coming to find out more about Set Square Bristol, our incubator, and how we support our founders and why we may be the best place to um, incubation support to actually help you on your entrepreneurial journey. So my name is Kim. I am the interim director of Set Square Bristol, and in my role, I support the strategic development of our programs and ensure we have regional impact and work with my wider team to support our founders who will create and grow the exciting world changing technology companies. Many of our companies we work with were once where you are now, taking their first step on their journey by joining us at our Discover event. So I really hope to see some of you come through our programs in the future. So in terms of the shape of today, so I'm going to be doing a, run, um, a rundown of the overall programme and what's included into Set Square Bristol. We'll then hear from our entrepreneur in residence, Annalisa, who will be providing some invaluable support to and coaching to our businesses. And then we're going to have a talk from one of our alumni companies, so that's Tom from Lockbox, and he's going to provide some insights on his experiences in our incubator. And finally, there's going to be some time for Q&A, because I'm sure you'll have lots of questions. But if you have any questions throughout the session, please do pop them in the chat box and we'll get to them towards the end of the session today. So who is Set Squared Bristol? So we are an inclusive tech incubator which supports the growth and development of global tech businesses. We are University of Bristol backed, which allows us to have a strong link to the academic community and engage with the technology and talent pipeline coming from the university. However, my team actually um, sit within a commercial setting at Set Square Bristol, which allows us to focus on the specific founding needs. The businesses and founders we support aren't all from the University of Bristol. In fact, there's only about 35% who have a connection to the university itself, and the others come from further afield. But essentially, we support founders from any background as long as they're wanting to create or develop a high-tech, high-growth business. So our business incubator is one of six connected business incubators within the Set Squared partnership. And that also includes Bath, Cardiff, Exeter, Southampton, and Surrey. And although we all run independently from the other centers, we are connected within the network of the partnership, allowing our members to access a broader peer, mentor, and investor network. Finally, our home is in Engine Shed near Temple Mead. So if, I'm not sure if anyone's been there before, but it's a great enterprise hub within the city of Bristol. And although our members don't need to be based within the building, you do get access to the lounge space at Engine Shed as part of your membership and can also choose to take up office space on site so you can benefit from being embedded inside the enterprise hub itself. So that's a bit more about what Set Squared of Bristol is, but you're probably thinking, why should you engage with us over other incubation programs? So here's some of our broader impacts at Set Square Bristol, and this is broader impacts over the past five years. The biggest one for me is our survival rate, which is 90% of our company survive for five years or more. And that's compared to a national average of 50% um, 50 of tech businesses within the UK. So you can see just being part of the Set Square Bristol incubator can have a massive impact on the survivability of your business. You can also see from our investment raises and the turnover made and the number of jobs created that we've supported a lot of businesses that have had major impact into the wider economy with 552 million pounds gross value added into the economic impact. In the last year alone, we supported around 85 members who have raised 33.1 million pounds investment, generated 20 million pounds in revenue and created 150 new jobs. And a lot of these impact stats are fantastic. For us, the most important thing is the actual influence that our businesses have and make into the society today. So our companies provide real world impact to real people. So this is the story of our companies and each of these companies are at different stages and come to us with different types of expertise. Some are new founders, some are complete re re repeat, repeat founders. So they might have had several businesses before. Some may be academics who are looking to go into business. Some may be business people who are looking to learn um, how to get into the tech sector. But regardless, they come to us to find the home for their business and to surround them with like-minded supporters, founders and businesses who can help them achieve their goals. To pick out a few from this list, so we've got Neighbourly, who are an award-winning giving platform which works with corporates to link in volunteer time, product surplus and cash donations into the community organisations and charities that might need support. So this tech platform has enabled £22 million to go into the right hands and has also ensured that 125 million meals have found it onto the plates of the people who need it most. 
Pick out lettuce grow as well, who have a vertical aeroponic farm. So this reduces pressure on the farming sector, enabling the growth of more food. And they've recently launched a fantastic farming project to work with prisons to rehabilitate and re-educate prisoners so they're fit for work in the sector in the future. And then also we've got Lockbox there. So um, Tom will be talking about his business experience at Set Squared shortly. Um, and although we do support a lot of different businesses, for us, the main thing is working with the founders. So we're very founder focused and made sure that we understand their needs when we work with them. So at the centre here is Joanne Boyce, who won the Best Pitch at our Texpo event, which is our annual pitch at Showcase for our members. So she won last year's. And Joanne is founder of Include AI, which helps marketeers to connect with their audience by spotting and removing unconscious biases in digital content. So you may start to see a theme. So the theme here for our tech businesses are tech for good. And that's really strong within Bristol and something we try and encourage and enable our businesses to consider during their programme. But ultimately, the main thing is we're here to help our founders to succeed. So what is our programme and how are we different? So our full programme is bespoke. We work with the founders based on their business needs to ensure that they get the support required when it is needed. This means that we don't run a fixed programme and we encourage our founders to choose their own path and make use of the resources available to them as and when they need it. I mentioned earlier that we are an inclusive incubator and this really means that we're tech agnostic, so we work across multiple tech sectors, but we're also keen on making sure that we're inclusive in terms of the founders that we support. So we have created several bespoke programmes which support women and minority ethnic founders into our incubator. And this year we're looking to add other initiatives to support more diversity across our programmes. We're also open to anyone from anywhere, although companies will likely get more value if they are based within the Bristol region or can easily attend our activities in Bristol when they arrive. We can facilitate visa sponsorship for any of our entrepreneurs who may need it. So this means that it enables us to be inclusive. I've also spoken a little bit about our impacts itself, but myself and my team are driving to improve our offer to our members. And we're always looking to make sure that we can add more value to our members within our programs. So the program itself, so let's just focus on the core part there. So as an overview of our program, we have five core topics that we think are really important to get right when a startup's being created. And that's the product, the organization, the market, the funding, and then at the core of all that is the development of the founders themselves. And the support that we do comes in various different ways. So firstly, I wanna start with the community and network. Our community events are really important for people to meet peers, potential partners, enable people to broaden their network and find potential advisors, mentors, customers, and potentially even investors. So we have our 12 Community Connect events, which run um, very regularly, almost monthly, and there's almost 500 people in our network. So people come to these events fairly regularly. And we also have a provider and mentor network and it's growing all the time. So these events really help to connect you with the people that you need going forward. The 12 themed forums that we run, which run across our programme, are in various different ways. It's a way to really help people get this peer to peer support. And so there's several different specific themes across those um, forums. So that includes things like a health tech forum, a women in tech forum and even a consultancy to product forum. And this is a way for our founders to bring their problems and hear from other people that might have had the same experiences and might even be able to provide a solution for them. As an early stage founder, you will always need to access the tools and software at a cheaper rate. And we have worked with our partners to ensure that you get the services you need now for a fraction of the price through our 12 discounted tools and softwares. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we're based with an engine shed, and so you get access to lounge and um, meeting space. So it's a great place to come and meet other people. You can meet informally in the lounge um, downstairs, or you can also get a bookable private meeting room in our upstairs set squared corridor, and that's available for members when they need it too. Now we're jumping into the skills and training part of it. So we have um, 50 workshops which run across the year and our workshops are available to the individual founder, to the broader team, and then as they grow any staff that might actually join as well. And this enables people to learn what they need to know to run the business. 
It covers a wide range of topics from fundamental business knowledge in market research and business planning and finances and investor readiness to more broader to um, topics such as how to keep culture within the team, how to talk about your business and anything else that you might need to know. The majority of our workshops aren't mandatory and they're actually there for you to decide when is the best time for you to learn what you need to know for your business. It's very much your journey as a business founder. So you have the flexibility to do as much or as little of the workshops as you need to, depending on your capacity and where you are in your journey. However, I would say, if you are in the programme, make the most of the ones that are available because they are excellent workshops. And then within our broader network, there's also many other programmes that run across Set Squared Partnership and with our partners, which all of our member businesses will have access to as a Set Squared member. And then for me, this part is the core of our program. This is the kind of individual coaching and that bespoke business support for those individuals who are actually getting started with their businesses. So first, we've got our incredible entrepreneurs and residents. And as I mentioned earlier, going to be um, hearing from Annalisa, who's going to be just talking briefly about what the IRs do to support our members and her experiences there. We also have our mentors who are mostly ex-entrepreneurs themselves and have followed a similar journey to our founders, and they can offer some real knowledge and experience to help you and your business. We've got an incredible community of advisors. So we've got, now we've got 17 advisors and residents who provide free in-residence slots for our founders. And that means you can get some face-to-face -face time with some lawyers, some accountants, and some patent attorneys before really having to contract them on a specific task. We even have investors, CTOs, and hopefully soon we'll have some CEOs and residents who can provide you some, with some support in shaping your business. And then finally, each of our full members gets a panel of advisors from across our network as part of their business review panels. Now, these panels are hopefully the most relevant people for your business, so you can get the right advice and access to the people who can connect you in with the most relevant networks. These boards are invaluable and really give the experience of how to manage a relationship with key senior advisors. So there's just another overview of the incubation model so you can see how we operate. So there is a cost for membership. However, this support is heavily subsidized. So it's accessible for our founders with us passing on around only a third of the cost of the support provided. So this is kind of how the, the costs work out. So our full membership is £230 and plus back per calendar month. However, we do provide a startup discount to those who may not have raised money before or don't have any regular revenues. And on top of that, we also have a discount available for, um, to support inclusion. So we've got our breakthrough bursary, which supports tech founders from minority ethnic backgrounds. And this covers 75% of the, the fees for the first year of membership and also includes three months of free co-working space. On top of this, if you wanted to have additional um, office space within Engine Shed, desks start from about £100 per calendar month, and you can have bigger office spaces within the um, Engine Shed as well. And then also we've got a partnering innovation centre where you can get access to labs and to bench spaces too. Here's some nice pictures of Engine Shed for anyone who might not have been in the space before. If you've not, we're down by Temple Mead, so do pop in. You can use the lounge space here um, when you want to. It's a great space for coming and collaborating and meeting people. So hopefully you're thinking, wow, this sounds great. I'd love to take part. Um, but the first thing is to think about, are you actually ready for Set Squared? So we support tech-based businesses. So you've got to have something that no one else has got and something that you can build upon. So defensibility is key. So that might be intellectual property that's at the core of the business, but ideally technology has to be the central part of what you're wanting to do in your business. We also only work with incorporated and established businesses. So you must have a business before you come onto the Set Squared program. You have to be ambitious and ex have expectations that you can grow your business, make it big and have big impact, whether that's financial or big impact in other ways. You must have kind of some idea of your cash projections and assumptions on profit and loss. Have you thought about what funding you might require to get off the ground and how to scale in the future? Because that's something that we really need to make sure that you know before you join the programme. You must also be willing to listen. This is really important. 
because not everybody knows everything when they come to us and we hope that you don't and that's why you're here to learn and you must be able to listen to the advice and the support you get from everybody on the program in order to grow the business further and finally are you looking for a home one of our founders recently said that coming to Set Square Bristol allowed them to find their tribe and the people who became their family whilst they started their entrepreneurial journey. We're a community here and we're a home for startups. So if that's something that you want, then hopefully we'll be the right place for you. And if you're not sure about whether or not you are ready, we do have some earlier stage support for um, founders as well. So this We've got other things included in such as in short courses, uh, this discovery phase, so that's ideation sessions. We've got the Quest program, which is a pre-incubation program, which helps people to actually set up a business. Um, and then we've also got the START program, which we're part of, which is a, a West of England combined authority back program for people looking to set up tech enabled businesses within the Bristol region. And we also have Enterprising Women, which specifically works with women founders to create new businesses within the Southwest. If any of these might be of interest, or if you're not sure about where you are in your journey, then just do reach out to us and we can have a chat with you about where you are. Ultimately, we're here to help. So this is my team and then the four EIRs. And um, I'm going to pass over to Annalisa, who's going to tell you a little bit more about what an entrepreneur in residence does and how they support our businesses. Thanks, Kim. If you're, if you're able to turn your camera on, do. It's, uh, it's always nice to see, uh, see the people that I'm speaking to and check that <clears throat> I'm making some sense. You mentioned there about the, the sense of home and uh, I was listening to Zara Nanu um, talk at the International Women's Day event last week about how she really does feel like when she comes back to Set Squared, it's, it's like coming home. I, I, I really read me, really made me feel good. Um, and uh, I, I love the idea that we've got lots of these businesses coming through Set Squared, but feeling like they've got a home base. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, lovely to see your faces come up on screen. Thank you for that. So I'm Annalisa. I'm one of the four entrepreneurs in residence here at Set Squared. Um, it was a job that was hard earned. And I'll tell you a little bit about the initiation ceremonies I went through to, to get this role. Um, but I started, my, this is my second career really. My first career uh, was as a management consultant for about 20 years, uh, advising the top teams of some of the biggest companies in the UK, big banks, big energy companies, big water companies, and helping the top teams of those businesses design their three, five, seven year strategies, um, helping to drive accountability in the executive team to deliver on those strategies uh, and make sure that their strategies had impact. Um, and the way I did that was trying to engage those executive teams as best I could in a sense of mission, vision, um, and try to create uh, paths through that would make them as easy as possible. Sometimes those programs were very exciting, growth, innovation programs, new market entry. Quite often they were really painful regulatory programs or change programs uh, that were in the public eye and under a lot of scrutiny. And for a long time, I sort of denied my management consultant background. Management consultants don't always have the best um, reputations, um, but I've come to be very comfortable with it because over the last five years of working exclusively with startups, I realized that what I learned in that first 20 has been very useful. You know, all of that strategy rigor I'm able to bring to startups, that network of industry uh, uh, representatives I still have and can still reach out to uh, for my startups and the operational knowledge that I learned uh, when, when I see all of those different executive roles across those organizations that still holds true now as well. The good thing is, though, working with, with startups, I get to work with a much greater sense of urgency and a bit more skin in the game. And you'll sense that sense of urgency when you're in Set Squared and you're in um, Entrepreneur in Residence sessions. It's amazing how much you can get done in one hour. Um, most startups sort of say they, they like me a little bit to their swim coach. You know, I, I sometimes I just want to go swimming. I don't need you there all the time. And in fact, once a month just to check my technique is, is, is more than enough. Thank you, Annalisa. So yeah, we, we get a lot done in the hour. 
Um, I work here at Set Square just to give you a sort of a feel for it. I'm here on a Thursday. So today is my Set Square day. Um, I've met four different businesses for uh, office hours effectively. So one to one advisory with those businesses. Um, with one, we have drastically reduced uh, the complexity in their pitch. Uh, their pitch was 45 pages. Um, and uh, I've, I've, I've sent, uh, <laughs> sent them away with the mission to create one page. Uh, one page that will go from the problem uh, that, uh, the, 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 that his business is solving, uh, his solution, how his solution is different, and the benefits that his solution delivers as a first, first piece, and then how he's going to develop that solution over time with investment and what the growth plan might be. Once, once we've got that one pager, we can then put that to work in all sorts of different ways in terms of how to get the right advisors around, how to get the right investors around, how to develop the right product roadmap. But first, we needed to just bring it right back down to the core of the business. So that was one hour. Um, I've had another hour just now designing the governance around uh, one of our set squared businesses. They've been here for a while. They're really ready now to go out for investment. And one of the final things to do is to make sure they've got the right advisory team around them, that they're rooted in the market and that they're using the market insights that they're getting to feed into a really effective board of directors. I do think the governance aspect of what set squared does is quite unusual. I work in quite a few different accelerators, not on a Thursday. It's a great way to meet startups. Uh, I work with Techstars. I work with Accenture's Innovation Lab. Um, I work at the University of Cambridge, Postdoc Academy, um, and with the Royal Academy of Engineering. But I really love the focus that uh, Set Square places on governance. Doesn't sound like the hottest topic, does it, governance? But of course, actually, it's a brilliant way of locking value into your business and making sure that when you do go out for investment, you're, you're in control uh, of of, of that process, that you know what it is you want, you know the kind of people you want it from, you know how much your business is worth, and you're well set to be able to, um, to work with institutional investors. Um, what happens if you don't have governance strong is that those investors tend to see governance gaps and fill them for you, uh, all, all trying to be helpful, but not, not necessarily where you want to be. What else have I done today? Uh, there was another one. Oh, yeah, there's another one where we worked exclusively on sales today. So uh, they had a pilot uh, that they were just about to price for. Uh, and we spent an hour really working out um, what what bigger picture this pilot was part of, that actually this was just step one in a four stage commercial journey with this client. And rather than going and just sell this pilot, this is a good opportunity to set out the four steps, the typical steps that a customer like that would go through with this founder and their business. Um, here's the first stage. Here's how much value you're going to get from it. And therefore, yeah, here's the cost. And yes, by the way, the price we came up with was two and a half times what he was going to go in with. So that's a couple of examples today. Um, also had the joy of chairing a BRP today, and Kim mentioned uh, that in, in, in sort of the core offer of Set Squared. So uh, this is for a Set Squared business. It was their first BRP. Usually uh, in, in a tenure with Set Squared, you'd, you'd have three. Tom, I don't know how many you had. I'm sure we'll hear three or maybe four. Um, but this was a first one. And the way the BRP works is uh, Set Squared team do a brilliant job of going out to that 500 um, uh, advisor list that they've got, who they know well, how they know 500 advisors, I don't know. Business review panel, Abby. Um, business review panel. It's a little bit like a board, uh, really. It's a, it's a, it's your often for a founder the first experience of a board. We run it like a board. Uh, we have advisors sat around the table, you know, bringing core experience in in growth, in legal, in financial, in market. Uh, we make sure that we've got some really good experts. This was for a mark um, a, a health device uh, business today. And so we had experts in there who had previously scaled health device uh, companies. We had a lawyer who specializes in IP around health devices. Um, we had uh, medical devices and uh, we had uh, an an excellent contributor who's been uh, responsible for structuring businesses uh, of that type for sale. So you've got experts around the table with, with startup expertise. The founder comes prepared with three critical questions. Uh, they come up with those three critical 
critical questions through time with their entrepreneur in residence. Um, and they, we, we have two hours to work through those, those questions and getting advice from the people around the table. And it's well chaired, well, usually well chaired. Um, and uh, the founder goes away just full of advice uh, on, on some of those, those tricky topics. And usually what happens as with today, everyone around that table puts their hand up and says, yeah, please come to me again if you've got any questions. Um, if, you know, if you need any further help, I'm here. So it's the beginning of building advisory networks. That's quite a typical day, really, uh, on a Thursday. A few different businesses, one-to-ones on those those types of topics, uh, plus something like a BRP or, um, you know, maybe a bit more of an in-depth strategy, deep dive with, with a founder that needs more than an hour, may spend a couple of hours. What else would I like to say to you? I suppose just a moment on how I came to the role. Like I said, I was really delighted to get it. I was in London um, until a year and a half ago, uh, knew I was making a move to Bristol, and I read the Tech Nation Regions report um, that talked about this sort of magical centre called Set Squared um, and gave some great case study examples of businesses that had been through Set Squared. Uh, one of them was called Lockbox and uh, the chief exec of that business, Tom, who's on the call, was sort of saying about the value he got from Set Squared. Uh, there was another one, Autonomy, another one, Tumalo, all featured in this article. And I just wrote to those uh, founders through LinkedIn and said, I'm thinking about coming to Bristol and keen to see, see what Set Squared's all about. Can I you know, do a bit of mentoring for you and advice in, in return for you giving me a bit of advice on Set Squared? And that's what we did. Tom and I met sort of two or three times during lockdown, um, got to know the business a little bit. And he told me a little bit about Set Squared. And um, managed to get an introduction in. Um, I was then put through this sort of six, seven month initiation, initiation ceremony uh, from Grev, who was the previous entrepreneur in residence and had been here for a really long time and had to sort of prove my worth uh, in lots of different um, difficult situations. I didn't quite have to eat sort of terrible things in the jungle, but it did feel a little bit like that at, at times. What I'm trying to say is they work really hard to get um, the kind of people into Set Squared that are going to be really valuable for Set Squared type businesses. Um, if you're not sure whether you're one of those types of businesses, uh, you know, Kim said tech businesses, uh, businesses that are ambitious and ready to scale, often uh, engineering led or science led, uh, something with intellectual property, quite geeky sometimes, who are wanting to then build the business around their invention. Uh, this is a really great space for you. But if you're not sure, just, just go to Kim and she'll be able to give you some advice. It may be that you uh, go to a slightly earlier program, or it may be um, that you feel that you're a little bit further along, in which case uh, feel free to go to Kim as well, because I, I think we'll be able to help, you know, maybe able to point you to some particular advisors within our network, um, but I'm pretty sure we'll be able to help. Um, what other types of things have I done as entrepreneur in residence? So um, to give you an idea of scale, I've, I've got about 15, 20 businesses that I look after, and then the other EIRs would have their own sort of portfolio. So I get to know those businesses quite well over the time that they're here. Um, they can meet with the other EIRs as well for certain things, and we all do have a little bit of a speciality. Uh, but uh, I do get to know those businesses. Um, sometimes I'll get into uh, leadership coaching, you know, actually spend some time with the founder on building their own leadership persona, maybe building their confidence to present in public or to pitch or to be a bit more demanding in terms of some of their commercial negotiations. Uh, the work will pretty much always start, though, around that core proposition, the getting to the one pager, the, the ability to really bring to life the, the why, the how, the what of your business. Uh, something that really can't be challenged by anyone. Um, but yes, we'll cover uh, the, the those those main topics of product, market, organisational aspects, funding and governance. All those um, core building blocks, really, of of building a startup. And I would say that within the portfolio I have at the moment from Set Squared, I've got a number of businesses that are in the pre-seed phase, um, right the way through to businesses that are in Series A. So, you know, it, it, we, we will always be looking at product, at the customer, at the market, um, at organizational aspects for, for you in building your business, at funding, and governance. But we'll be looking at it in slightly different ways with greater degrees of rigor, depending on the size and maturity of your business, but absolutely able to get across um, from pre-seed to series A. 
Uh, one of the other things that you'll notice uh, in Set Squared is, is the sense of community. So um, the peer community, I think, is, is not to be underestimated. It's something that investors actively look for. They want to know that founders are rooted in peer networks because they know that founders helping founders is one of the quickest and most effective ways to founders moving their business forward. So uh, as an example, we've got a really uh, great um, health tech um, peer community here uh, that are regularly in the pub as far as I can work out, uh, no, com collaborating and comparing notes, uh, but they've been able to really help in terms of, um, you know, who are you using for your design agency, who are you using for your uh, branding agency, how have you, you know, how are your manufacturing relationships going, which of the set squared advisors has really helped in terms of the regulatory approval, that type of thing, that insider knowledge that just really helps to move you along, you'll, you'll notice that. Um, I think that's that's one network. The others uh, are around the advisor uh, group. So you'll meet them in in these business review panels, but you'll meet them at, at connect events. The advisors do a good job of coming in and, and just getting to know you there. Um, plenty of people to meet to tell about your mission, not sell your business, but tell about your mission. And you'll just people will be putting their hands up and asking to get involved. One of the real benefits I think I'd say about um, sort of my observation of, of Set Squared and it being based here in Engine Shed uh, right at Temple Meads is, you know, Bristol is a brilliant business ecosystem. And I, I really noticed that having come from London, it's just that perfect size of people knowing in, each other enough to be able to make the connections, but being big enough to have a critical mass of, of expertise. And that here, uh, Temple Meads and Engine Shed does feel like it's in the center of that. We're also really connected into lots of the other accelerators and incubators. So, and you know, there, there's there's lots of nice uh, flow between some of those others, uh, other, other networks as well. So to finish, um, yeah, wonderfully warm business ecosystem. I find it here to be tremendously productive. It's really grounded. You get lots of work done. Uh, you build your business here. You build your advisory teams. You build your, uh, your proposition. Uh, you build your um, investor network. Uh, you build your team. Uh, of people that you're going to bring in. You build connections with the university for research purposes or for building out scientific advisory boards. You know, we've got fantastic access to Bristol University here and, and the professors there who are really keen to work more with startups. Um, it's a building kind of a place. I, I guess that's why it's uh, all about incubation. Um, I'm going to hand you over, though, uh, to Tom. Uh, I'll stay. I'll be here at the end if there are any questions. Uh, but yeah, always a pleasure to see Tom. Um, Tom, really thankful for you welcoming me to Bristol, and I'm keen to do a good job of, of introducing you now. But Lockbox is a real business to watch. Uh, it's a it's a mission driven business uh, that's looking to um, to to do the important work in financial services that, that we need for for the more vulnerable or for the less well served uh, who are looking to build their profile in financial services. So um, over. To you tom tell us your story excellent thanks annalisa um good afternoon everyone uh great introduction and i'm really pleased that a lot of the themes uh that have come out and been discussed already are the same sort of themes that i'm going to be talking about this afternoon so i'm not wrong on any of those things i don't think um everyone good afternoon i'm, I'm tom air i'm the co-ceo and co-founder of a business called lockbox uh we're a bristol uh bristol hq i suppose uh, fintech, financial technology business. So we're, a, we're in the financial inclusion and financial wellbeing space. And um, as has been mentioned, we've come through the Set Square program. So when I was asked to talk here, I thought this would be a great, uh, great opportunity, not just to espouse uh, about some of the brilliant stuff that we experienced as part of Set Square, but also to try and impart uh, some things to think about. Uh, because when, when, when I asked who was likely to be on the call, there was an awful lot of, um, it felt like there was an awful lot of probably very, very early stage founders, potential founders uh, of early stage businesses thinking about coming to the Set Square program. So I, I sat back and I thought, what are some of the things that I might like to have been told or I might like to have been uh, signposted to think about um, in the early days? And perhaps how, how did Set Square help us with that? Um, so I'll, I will keep this as, as brief as I possibly can. Um, who is Lockbox? We've told you what we are. 
financial inclusion, financial wellbeing business, um, launched uh, in 2017, so July 2017. Uh, we've now served over 2 million customers uh, in the UK and the US, so we expanded internationally. Uh, at the very end of 2019, terrible timing, and we shouldn't expand internationally just before COVID. Um, we have about 100 members of the staff. Uh, around the world, the vast majority of them in the UK, split between Bristol and London, uh, the rest largely in, in, in America serving those, those operational markets. Uh, and we've grown really rapidly over the last couple of years um, for, for lots of reasons. Um, and hopefully I, I, I might touch on some of them. I probably don't have time to touch on all of them, um, but we'll see, we'll see where we get to. So when I was, I mean, I like to do everything in threes, right? The answer is always three things. So I'm going to talk to you about three bits of three bits of advice that I hope would be helpful for you or would, would have been helpful for us. Um, so it's nice and easy to remember. Uh, the first one, for, for those of you either very early in, in your entrepreneurial story uh, or thinking about getting into, into running a business, um, the first one is that building a startup requires exceptional resilience unbelievable resilience um it is probably the key characteristic you're going to need above all else to be able to deal with the constant barrage of no's and challenges um is going to be difficult your friends will not understand what you're doing the sacrifices you're making should be more than most people that you know uh, if you're doing it properly your family will probably at some point become pretty annoyed with you with the amount of time effort and energy you're putting into it this is the the amount of effort i would imagine you're going to be pouring into your businesses very very few people are going to understand how challenging that is but community really helps and community is something that the set squared program really offered to us so i can tell you now uh for the first sort of five years of, of my business i was a solo founder it was bloody lonely uh, to do that and it was hard and it was challenging i made loads and loads and loads of mistakes wasted a ton of money um all of the stuff that you shouldn't do and probably nobody writes in books or not that often um the community that set squared in bristol brought uh was uh was exceptionally important to, to me and my co-founder so we were introduced uh, by chance by, by by deloitte he said you ought to look at look at set squared we knew nothing about the bristol tech scene turns out that bristol has a tremendous tech scene we are a financial services business so we naturally honed in on london uh, thinking that london was the only uh, the only place to be of course it isn't uh, and post covid that's even more so um the community and the tech scene in bristol is second to none uh accessing it is hard from the outside if you don't have a way in something that the set squared program brings uh, is a direct route into the center of that and uh, on the plus side it brings network it brings community it brings uh, a group of founders together at varying levels for you to have conversations share ideas share experiences cry over your pints with uh, whatever it is that you choose to do um, on the other side it is just a great fun group of people uh, to learn from so Point one, building a startup requires significant resilience and Set Squared's community uh, is a great solution to some of the loneliness and challenges that come from that. Point two, please go about your entrepreneurial journey seeking information and insight and guidance wherever you can find it. But please remember that everybody is an expert. Most of them are wrong. Okay, so getting information and insight is helpful remember to ignore it in fact probably more often than not ignore it okay you are going to come across a ton of people that have 40 years experience in a law firm who know absolutely nothing about entrepreneurial growth okay do not believe that you have to listen to every single thing that person says trust uh trust in yourself be cynical of experts be cynical of advice uh understand that it's okay to ignore this and trust your instinct. Your instincts are a lifetime's worth of data. Your gut feel is generally going to be right. So why do I say this? I say this because when everybody's an expert, you need to know who to trust. And in my experience, the entrepreneurs in residence like Annalisa, uh, the experts, the advisors that Set Squared vet and bring together uh, are good, are really very good. So that first initial hurdle that you're going to have of wondering whether this person is talking utter rubbish, you don't have to deal with this. Okay, Set Squared has done that for you. So the groups of people that Set Squared vet and bring together will assist you. Uh, hopefully on countless occasions, they will save you money, they will save you time, they will save you effort, and hopefully they will save you from killing your own business, which you are definitely at risk of doing 
uh, if you follow an awful lot of the bad advice. Certainly I can speak to personal experience, followed tons of it, it was all wrong. Point three, be careful with your resources. Uh, times are tough. You are going to find it significantly harder to get money and fund your business than anybody has done in the last five years. Okay, there is, it is under every single day, it is going to get harder to fund your business. Um, stop striving for perfection. Okay, that is one of the easiest ways of spanking your cash, what little cash you have. And somewhere, someone, somewhere along the line, someone is going to tell you to give up your equity because it's cheaper than cash. They are wrong. If you are putting your effort into running a business and growing it, your equity should be the most valuable asset that you have. Cash is significantly cheaper than equity. If you don't believe that, don't start a business. If you don't believe that you are going to grow a big enough business that your equity is valuable, don't bother starting in the first place. Bootstrapping where you can it is probably going to be the only way. I can tell you now, we didn't raise any money at all. I think I started with about 100 quid. Uh, for about the first five years of the business and I had to run off the side of my desk. Was it hard? Yeah. Was it really painful? Yeah. Did it build my muscles? Yeah, absolutely. Did that mean that we were able to survive a lot of stuff that other places uh, and other businesses that I know weren't? The last three to five years of unbelievable amounts of money flowing in from the VC space have distorted the market. There are businesses alive today who should not be. They should never have survived. Okay. And they will distort, distort the market for your great business. Don't play into it. Okay, so in the first instance, be careful with your resources. Don't give them away cheaply. Set Squared program is going to help you with that. They're going to help you with that because the amount of advisors, the advice that you can get, the experts that they can bring together that previously someone else would have charged you an arm and a leg for is unquestionably one of the most valuable resources you can get your hands on. Pick the brains of those experts for everything they're worth. That's certainly what I did when I came through the Set Squared program. Um, we were we penny pinched absolutely everywhere we could we pushed the limit of what advice we could get for free what guidance we could get for free what support we could get for free to the absolute limit probably to the annoyance of some of the experts that uh that set squared were able to bring together but that's absolutely fine because your success might depend on it so in rounding up i'm going to come to the very very end of it three things that i want you to remember okay in order Building a startup requires significant resilience. Set Squared is going to help with that via community. Seek information and insight, but be cynical about it all of the time. Set Squared is going to help you with that by pre-qualifying the experts and the advisors that you get to interact with. Be careful with your resources. They're valuable. Don't give them away cheaply. Set Squared is going to help you with that by bringing together all of the experts and advisors you should ever need in one place and giving you the opportunity to pick their brains. It's valuable, don't spank your cash on it elsewhere, use set squared for that. So I think that's probably a reasonable place to stop. Uh, three things, I hope it's been helpful. Um, if anybody wants to, to reach out, uh, please do so by, by LinkedIn. Um, we're in the Bristol space, we're in the financial services space. Um, I remember what it was like very, very, very early in the journey and I would be exceptionally happy to talk to anyone who might uh, who might want to, either in the Q&As now or, uh, or via LinkedIn afterwards. Um, I don't know who I'm handing back to, but uh, hopefully someone will take over from me. Thank you very much. That's me. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tom. That was brilliant. Um, so we're going to have our Q&A session now. So um, Jack is going to be chairing this session. So Jack is our business incubation manager. And I'll hand over to Jack. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Um, hi. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Jack, as, uh, as mentioned. Um, what business incubation manager means in plain English is that I have responsibility for running the incubation program itself. Um, and day to day, if you pardon the bad pun, I've become a bit of a jack of all trades, um, helping out in, in quite a few ways. Um, so that's just to explain who I am in a, in a very quick, uh, quick two seconds. Um, yeah, there's no question too small. So please do put them in the chat, whether it's for Tom um, in the experience of being a business, whether it's Annalisa as an EIR, whether it's a broader question about the program, um, put them in the chat and I'll, I'll be going through as, as, as they come up. Um, so we have a, a first point here. Um, I'm doing a PhD at Bath and living there, but I think I might want to run my business in Bristol. Should I be looking at Set Squared Bath or Bristol? Um, Kim? I'm guessing that's one for me. Um, it really does depend on where you are at the stage of your business, because the, the support that's offered at Bath is for a slightly earlier stage businesses than one in Bristol. If you are wanting to set up a 
business here, then I would probably say Bristol is the best place to do it because we can connect you in with the Bristol ecosystem. Um, but maybe if you reach out to us offline and then I can have a chat with you about the stage of your business and we can see what's going to be the best support for you. Thanks, Kim. And thanks for that question, Aaron. Um, I'm going to piggyback uh, on that. And I think this is a question um, probably for, for yourself, Annalisa, working quite closely with the businesses, but, but Kim and Tom, feel free to weigh in. Um, we do obviously do have quite a combination of resident businesses that have desks and offices in the engine shed and work there most of the week. We have quite a lot of businesses that work in the lounge and, and come in a few days a week. And then we have quite a lot of the cohort that, that works remotely um, and might might pop in, but but some are spread across the country. How do, how do you see the differences in, in how they engage with the programme? And how do you how do you find that experience of, of remote versus in person? I'll pick on you, Annalisa, just as uh, I think in, in terms of the businesses. I am also. loving the fact that Engine Shed is becoming so busy that I'm actually starting to moan about how busy it is. It's brilliant. Um, it's, it's everything that we want. I don't think there's a single time when I come to Engine Shed that something good uh, d doesn't happen. You know, it's something that I wasn't expecting to happen or always happens when I come down to Engine Shed. Um, so I, I what I'm noticing is that the people who come in uh, are best able to to attack, uh, attract both the community of peer founders, but also advisors that Tom mentions. You know, this is where you meet them; they hang out here. Um, so uh, that that's where I notice the value. You know, you can access a lot of the IR uh, support through Zoom. I, I'm always here, but some of my calls are, are via Zoom. Um, but it's just it's making those networks. I think that makes such a difference, and it does immediately play through in terms of the success of the businesses. I think. Excellent, thanks. Um, was there, Kim or Tom? Was there anything you wanted to add to that, or, or did you think that was a <laughs> that was well said? Well, they better think it's, it was. Well yeah. said. It was definitely well said, Annalisa. Yeah. No, I completely Thank agree. You. I think I think it's really nice having businesses back within the space, and I think people do get more value out of that face to face contact. Um, there are obviously some things you can do online, but it's never as good, in my opinion. Thanks, Kim. Um, Tom, I'll ask you, um, by the way, everyone, please do put any questions in the chat. Yeah, don't be shy. Um, otherwise, you'll have to listen to all of my questions for the next 10 minutes. Um, but Tom, just um, going on the back of, of your presentation, can you think of any specific examples off the top of your head of, you know, you mentioned sort of the therapy sessions down the pub or, or you know, just supporting each other um, through through potentially difficult times. Can you think of any examples of times when being part of the incubator helped, whether it was sort of socially, whether it was just with a bad day, um, any any stories to tell there? Many that I could tell on a recorded call, um, mm -hmm. but I would happily chat about them down the pub uh, with lots of people. Um, I, I do you know what, we're probably going back now to 2019, 2020, um, end of 2019, early parts of 2020, um, when we were physically located in, um, in Set Squared understanding and dealing with how COVID was going to impact our business. Um, that was, I mean, for everybody, university was a challenging time. Um, it was certainly exceptionally helpful to be able to tap into a network of other people that were literally next door experiencing the exact same thing. We moved an entire business. We were, I think some people might call it old school now. I would be desperate to get back to it. Everybody worked in the office every single day. Um, it was pure heaven. Uh, now it's really hard to make people come into the office once a week. Um, we had to move that entire operation remote in one in, in, in one day, basically. We just decided we're shutting the office down. Um, we're done with this and we're going to move it remote. And um, and I think we would have found that much more challenging if it wasn't for the, the, the combined and shared experiences that we had with with our neighbours and our peers um, around the space. And then certainly I would, I would say the conversations that happened after that, uh, you know, how the bloody hell do we recruit? Uh, virtually, uh, we just launched a business in the United States. What the hell do we do about that? We can't travel to the United States. We have no staff there, uh, et cetera. We, we were always able to tap into someone that had probably not the same experience, but if nothing else, honestly, just having a shoulder to moan on um, is really exceptionally helpful. Uh, and that we did and, and others would do, would do to me, which was, um, which was quite nice. Excellent. Thanks, Tom. Um, we've got a couple more questions coming in. Um, so uh, I was wondering whether you allow current PhD students to pursue the business aspects of their PhD products, uh, projects sorry, um, while simultaneously pursuing the R&D through their PhD at the university um, for projects where the student owns uh, their own arising and background IP. Um, so, Kim, I might hand over to you in a second, but just very broadly, in, in terms of, because we're generally a later stage incubator focused on growth, 
Um, having someone working full time on the business is, is generally one of our core criteria. Um, there's there's always the exception that that, that breaks the rule. Um, but the, so, yes, we, we in terms of, of applying and engaging with us um, uh, as set squared and uh, the incubation program, then it's always something we consider. But generally, that focus uh, and full time involvement with the business is something that we would look for. Um, but as, as Kim mentioned previously, we have our, our growing pre incubation programs that could be better suited to, to a business at that stage uh, and, and the focus that you'll have split. Um, but Kim, I didn't know if you wanted to add anything on that or if it's just worth saying catch up with it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, definitely just drop, drop us an email and um, we'll have a chat. But essentially, yes, there are different things that you can do to pursue that business aspect during your PhD. We have worked quite a lot with PhD students who are looking to develop their business and um, based on their PhD research. So come and have a chat with us and we can see what, what we can do. So either through our programs or maybe through some of our partnering programs as well across the set Square partnership. Excellent. Thanks, Kim. Um, there's a question here. Uh, can your network help with finding co-founders? Um, so I don't know if, uh, if anybody wanted to pick up on that one and how we how we engage with with helping with that search. It's not a formal offer in, in the way that uh, it is a formal offer in, in other uh, accelerators, but there are absolutely situations where um, some of our founders have found at least directors uh, to join them in the business through the, the Set Squared network. Um, I can think of a couple of examples there. So, you know, they, 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 they're coming in as a, as a first director into the business. Um, they've met through, um, you, you know, so either one of the workshops or one of the networking events, but lots of product, product experts in the network. They're, they're, they're often very popular to pick up. Uh, marketing expertise, uh, also very popular to work with. Um, and one today I've seen, which is a commercial director so that's where they've met someone through the set squared uh, community that they've then invited into their business as a as a commercial director so that that there's some of the experiences that i've had there's not a formal um co-founder matching program here though excellent thanks Annalisa. probably because it, just in, in virtue of it being a bit later on in the in the journey yeah i think for some of our earlier stage programs there probably will be a, a founder matchmaking at some point but it depends on the type of person that you're looking for and what i'd also always suggest is have a real think about what you actually need in your business maybe write up a little job description or a little brief and then we can maybe help with that once we know exactly what your needs are um but i think you understanding who you want and who you need is the best thing really to go forward because once you know that then we can help find somebody that fits that match one of the key benefits i will add of, of set squared is the tailoring of the program to your individual needs both as a founder and the business um and so there's two examples of earlier stage businesses with at the moment i won't name drop them but they're um uh, we've been doing sessions with them helping them build out job specs for co-founders or, or just helping them understand where their strengths are and, and where their skill gaps are um so again there are you know while there isn't a formal part of the program the program itself is flexible enough to help with with um you know these kind of these kind of uh, issues that that might not be programmatically dealt with as we go through I had good success as well with um set squared businesses who've then put those job specs up on text park and and you know so that's just sort of a, a, a you know another member of the community as it were and and found those jobs fulfilled and we also have some good um startup specialist recruiters in the community who are helping with a couple of the uh, uh founders who are looking to recruit as well that I, I can think of so yeah a good community again for that excellent um we have one more question on here we we probably got time for one or two more questions depending on the size afterwards so if there is anything you want to to get in for for whether tom is a member or, or more questions about the program feel free um but how long do companies tend to stay um in engine shed uh, or be set squared members uh, and how easy is it is uh, is it for companies to get desk space in in set squared um so okay, i'm happy to run with this one um so the the average time um, has consistently been about two and a half years, um, but it, it, it's it's almost how long is a piece of string? Um, I think you know for, for when it when it comes to high growth, well, high growth for an e-commerce SaaS business could be twelve months. For a heavy materials, heavy sort of R and D business, that could be five years. Um, and so I think the longest running business we have in the cohort at the moment, it has been with us for nine and a half years. Um, as an example, but we have plenty that have been with us for for less than a year as well. Um, so yeah, two two and a half is the average, but it's it's really as long as you're seeing value 
um, from from the program, um, then that's that's really that's the question we ask rather than it being set by a specific time period. Um, and in terms of, of desk space, um, just contact us afterwards. We we have offices of multiple sizes. Um, we have our set shared office, which has individual desk rentals. Um, there are desks available in in the engine shed um, in in a number of places as well. Um, so yeah, do get in touch. Obviously, availability can can go up and down. And as as we've all said, it's a, it's nice that it's a particularly busy time. Um, um, and that does, uh, yeah, so we're, we're quite full at the moment, but but um, yeah, we just get in touch basically. Um, yeah, any more questions for for uh, well, I see Annalisa's uh snuck one in, <laughs> so Tom, uh, I don't know if you've seen this of all the bad advice you got as a founder, what was the very worst, or more positively, what was the best? I'll let you choose which you prefer. <laughs> Do you know what? It, like, I think naturally it's easier to think of the bad advice. Um, than it is to think of the good stuff. Uh, what was the worst advice I ever had? Do you know what? I think it was really early on. I think it was that VCs are usually right. I was told this like at a couple of places, VCs are usually right. Actually, VCs are usually wrong. That's actually the reality. Sometimes they're right, and that's great, uh, but most of the time they're usually wrong. So that was bad advice that I was given. Uh, Good advice. Uh, good advice. Pick your um, pick your co-founder, like you would be entering a marriage, not into an employee employment relationship. Right? I mean, honestly, why did my my business partner and I, my co-founder Gregor Moet, um, Greg originally invested into my initial business, my earlier business, uh, as a minority, and we we eventually figured out that we were working together so much and definitely spending more time with each other than we were our, our, our respective spouses that we would go into business together. And it's been a marriage made in heaven. Uh, that's how that relationship has worked. But um, the pressures in the relationship are wildly, yeah, the pressures in the relationship are, are, are wildly different um, to that of almost any other relationship that you could that you could possibly have. So pick them really carefully, pick them really, really, really very carefully. Excellent. Thanks, Tom. Uh, the final question of uh, how do we get into the program? So you can apply through our website um, and then uh, through that application process, we'll, we'll um, uh, or you can just get in touch with with myself or one of the team directly. Um, and we're happy to talk through that. Um, but I know Kim's going to mention a few things in her, her closing comments as well. Um, and Rianne's just helpfully shared the, shared the link if anybody would like to take a look in the chat. Um, so yeah, thanks to, to Tom and Annalisa for, for your talks and, and um, your, your honesty as well um, in, in, in the journey. And I'll hand back to Kim for, for closing comments. Thank you very much to Jack and thanks to Tom and Annalisa as well. So hopefully you can see the final slide of the session. So um, we have our idea to pitch session, which is coming up in May. So this is going to be an opportunity. It's a half day training workshop for anybody who has got an idea for a business and you can actually have some training on how to actually present it and you get the time to develop and practice your elevator pitch. Um, so this is free to attend and um, the link is there if you do want it um, and it's a great course that runs kind of every six months or so so highly recommend it if you want to think about how to take your business idea forward um, so that's it for the rest of the discover event um, so I will be sending an email around to everybody so you'll all get my contact details if you want to reach out and have a chat I'm more than happy to take your comments and questions offline or connect with me on LinkedIn. But thank you so much to the speakers today. And thank you again to all of you for attending. And I really look forward to speaking to you all again soon. Thanks, everybody.